Kamatipura, in the center of Mumbai, one of the biggest and most notorious red light districts in all of Asia, crisscrossed by streets upon streets of brothel houses. It's believed at least 20,000 girls are working as prostitutes here. Many of them are underage, and most of them trafficked from the countryside. It's estimated 70% of them have HIV, and most are subjected to extreme violence. Just to give you an idea of how it works, so it is run by gangsters. You can see lots of men standing at the side, and they're all pimps. And they stop taxis for the customers, and they will bargain through the taxi. You'll see the guards on the doors, and every layer, because some of the buildings are a few stories high, there's guards on every floor, and there's watchers even sitting on the roofs. I've been investigating the sex trafficking trade here for the past 11 years, and I've got to know a prostitute called Gudu. Goody's toughness belies a desperate story of how she was tricked into prostitution when she was just 11 years old. She's 26 now and is used to being underpaid and being abused. She fights hard for her cash and unleashes a torrent of abuse on her client. He doesn't retaliate, probably because I'm in the room filming. Were you very scared? Goody was trafficked from a small village in southern India when she was just 11 years old. Like thousands of others growing up in extreme poverty, she was desperate for a better life and for the chance to earn some money, making her easy prey for the traffickers. There are up to 15 million people living in slavery across India, and most of them are women and children trafficked into the sex industry. <laughs> Even worse, I'd heard disturbing stories about how girls, especially the younger ones, were kept inside cramped locked boxes or cages. Goody told me the madams here routinely lock the girls up and abuse them, to break their will, to make them do as they're told. After years of trying and with the help of a local guide, I managed to get inside, to get a rare look at these slave conditions for myself. Endless corridors lead to caged areas where the girls are held behind bars. The deeper we went in, the darker it got. Okay, hold my hand. Oh, can't see anything. The walls were slimy with condensation and sweat. The stench of raw sewage was overpowering. Finally, we found what we were looking for. Hidden behind a trap door was a series of boxes, just over a metre high and padlocked. There was an eerie silence. I had to leave quickly before I could be certain anyone was inside the boxes. But what I could see was they were padlocked and girls' underwear was hanging over the doors. My guide to these brothels is Rahul. He asked me to hide his identity. He's a former street boy and now an aid worker. He rescues underage prostitutes and tells me that as well as locking up the young girls, 
there is a booming trade in sex with virgins. Many of the men here believe sex with a young child will reduce the risk of them getting sexually transmitted diseases. They will arrive here, they don't know anything, they will be in the dark room and manager will be there so he will tell the customer this is a virgin girl and she's very small like that and that rate will be increased like that. He told me the clients who come here try to outbid each other to get the youngest girl. Some people will be say 10,000, some people will be say 15,000, 20,000, the rate will be rise. So which rate will be stop like that? Na? So that person will be take that uh, child and uh, he will be abuse that child. A few years after Goody arrived in Kamatipura, she tried to get out, but her attempt failed. The police was going to go to the police. I was going to complete the complaint and I was going to put it in. So I was here in Chambur for three months. जो घर वाला है वो मेरे को साठ हजार जमीन में मेरे को छुड़ा क्या जमीन में छुड़ा मैंने बाद में फिर और आका वो भी तीन साल पहले खा गया। The police are part of the problem in Kamatipura. For many of them, prostitution is big money. In fact, they fight for the chance to work here, for the extra cash they can make in bribes. Thus, no police is not going to help us because police come for money. When they take money, they go. Kamati Pura is crawling with gangsters, also looking to make money from the girls. Goody was approached by one, offering to lend her money to escape. But he conned her. He gave her the money and is now forcing her to pay him back with interest. She's now further in debt and trapped. Leaving Kamati Pura is a complicated business. A local charity has tried to encourage Goody to leave and seek help. But Goody's pimp is now her boyfriend, and he controls her every move. She is so traumatized that she no longer trusts anyone. What do you hope for now in the future? Goody has been dreaming of going home for a long time. She's still stuck in Kamatipura, and she's still working to pay off her debts. It's a brutal industry that takes young girls and then enslaves them. A vicious, self-perpetuating cycle that offers no way out.